Hello, my name's Miles Young, and the first thing you may be surprised about is that my accent sounds English. Well, it is. Uh, I'm originally from England. I haven't actually lived in England for almost 23, 24 years, and I now live in the States. You might think it rather surprising that I'm heading a NGO, effectively, which is bringing to the States um, an exact replica of the frigate which Lafayette sailed here on in 1780, one of the pivotal points in the American War of Independence against Britain. However, I always say that uh, at the time of the American War of Independence there were a large number of people in Britain who actually believed in the demands of the colonists, not least the close members of the British royal family, including the Duke of Gloucester. It was the Duke of Gloucester who at a dinner party with the young Lafayette did more than anyone else to inflame Lafayette with an interest in the cause of the colonies and which led directly to Lafayette's first trip um, to the uh, rebelling um, colonies. But back to me um, for a moment. Uh, I was trained as a historian. I went to Oxford. Uh, one of my great interests was the 18th century. And I'm also a Francophile. When I came to the States, I fell in, I suppose, with a group of uh, Francophile uh, American friends. And I got involved in some Franco-American cultural exchanges, and one of those was to help form with Ambassador Craig Stapleton, who is the former American ambassador in Paris, the American Friends of Compiègne, which is a fantastic palace north of Paris, which very close to Compiègne is Blerancourt, which is the um, Franco-American museum where there are a lot of artefacts relating to the War of Independence and to the role of Lafayette in it. At some stage, uh, I got uh, a telephone call from Craig and from various American friends of mine in Paris saying, Mars, you know, we'd really like you to help us on something else that we're involved in. And I said, well, you must be crazy, I have no time. And they said, well, it's a very interesting project. It's about a rebuilt frigate, an 18th century frigate, and we're going to sell it to the States in two years' time. And we need someone to head up the American Committee of Friends. To which I said, well, I'm, I'm not American, I'm not French. You know, you've got the wrong guy. And anyway, they kept coming back. But in point of fact, eventually I, I said, yes, I'll do it. And I don't regret it at all. It's been an unbelievable journey. It's a, been a fascinating exercise. There's still a lot of work to do before it's delivered. I've met an unbelievable range of people um, from all walks of life and from very many differing viewpoints because just as the American Revolution reflected a spectrum of viewpoints on all sides and um, so those viewpoints do reach down still to today. So what is this project? It started off in a small uh, down at heel um, southeastern town in France, in poitou charentes on the Charente Estuary called Rochefort. And Rochefort had been badly knocked around during the war. It had actually been the town that Colbert had chosen as the Atlantic base of the French Navy. And the reason being that in its marshes and deep estuarine waters, it was secure from British um, raiding parties. And the original Hermione was built there in the very late 1770s as part of the naval arms race um, between Louis XVI and the United Kingdom um, at that time as France was seeking to rebuild the power which it had lost um, during the Seven Years' War. And the original Hermione was actually built in, in, in a very, very quick period of time and the latter day Hermione took a lot longer. Uh, it, this was spurred by the discovery of the wreckage of the original Hermio, which had found it off the coast of France. Um, and the wreckage was evident and still there, but it was too far gone to be reconstructed out of itself. Nevertheless, it created the idea, why don't we rebuild this frigate from scratch? And indeed, why don't we rebuild it in a way that's never been tried before? and to do it completely and utterly authentically. So it took over 1,500 French oak trees, and in the old French Nova Forest, they were all shaped like that, so they all created naturally the shape of a, of a howl. And everything possible was done to achieve authenticity. Now, a lot of 
um, recreated tall ships, period tall ships, are actually uh, very compromised underneath. They have iron superstructures or, or whatever. But this one's true to itself. And the hemp um, for the rope, the sailcloth, um, the cannons were founded in the original cannonry, so everything is, is highly authentic. It's been about 15 years in the making, and uh, at the end of last year, it was ready to set sail. So it had its sea trials, it went to Bordeaux, it was received by huge crowds. Um, it looks magnificent. This was a, a very fast frigate, um, highly armed, but very maneuverable. And in the spring of 1780, Lafayette um, was sent by Louis XVI um, back to the States with a message to George Washington. And Hermione was the vessel which he was assigned to sail in. So it sailed, making fast time between Rochefort and Boston. Lafayette arrived in Boston. Um, he was received with acclaim, and then he rode um, as quickly as he could to Morristown, New Jersey, where Washington was holed up in a pretty tough and adversarial position at that stage. In fact, I believe if one had been parachuted into America at that point, you would probably have said uh, the, the colonists are going to lose the war. Because the British clearly had the upper hand. The invasion of South Carolina in the South had been a great success. The Battle of Camden could have been a decisive battle in the, in the Civil War. Uh, and, and Washington um, you know, was even being uh, persuaded by some friends, allies, to seek peace. So the message arrived, and the message was of wholehearted French support. In other words, that the French would send a full expeditionary force um, to, the, to, the, uh, to the Americas. And it was a tipping point. Uh, of course, after that, um, the Hermione went and engaged in naval warfare against the British in the Atlantic, off the coast of Nova Scotia, off the coast of Long Island, <coughs> eventually came down to Yorktown, was part of the blockade of Chesapeake Bay, and Lafayette, of course, came down on the land side, and he was part of the siege of Yorktown, and then you had the end game, as it were, in which both those two parties, the ship and the man, were so instrumental. So we're celebrating something really important. <laughs> we're celebrating a piece of history which is in danger of being forgotten, which is that if it wasn't for French intervention, American independence is not likely to have happened. <coughs> or if it was to happen, it, did, it wouldn't have happened in quite the way in which it did happen. So now the interesting thing about this project was that the idea had always been to sail the new Hermione to the United States. That was the primary purpose of rebuilding it. And it was born out of a wish on the French side, I think, to celebrate this story and to bring it to life uh, and to demonstrate that this ship was, if you like, freedom's frigate. That's the way they describe it. So the voyage um, that's taking place this year is something that's been a long time in the planning and something that's got serious intent. And we, as the friends of Hermione in the, in the United States, have a clear mission statement and, and one of the missions is to um, re-evoke the alliance of France and the United States, which has held strong, more or less, intact ever since, and is still very strong, and particularly strong, actually, today. Another um, reason is to celebrate Lafayette himself, because he was an amazing guy. You know, he was just a youngster at this point. He had great charisma, and he had enormous enthusiasm, powers of persuasion. And his motto, his family motto, was Cur Known which is Latin for why not. So there's something about this project which is very contemporary in its feeling. I always describe it as a bit like sort of, you know, nothing's impossible. Uh, it's the Nike project. It's a project young people can really identify with. Why not? Why not do this crazy, mad, you know, impossible thing? Why not stretch your dreams? Why not try to, to, um, to do what everyone else says is not possible or wise? So in bringing the project here, we are going to do a number of things. First of all, we're going to move up the coast from Yorktown, Virginia, where we will arrive, to Castine, Maine, where we we'll leave. And so Yorktown, for obvious reasons, Castine actually used to be the capital of French America. Um, you may not know that, but it was. And so it's very symbolic that we should leave America in the former capital of French America. Now, obviously, we're visiting New York, we're visiting Boston, and we have a series of cultural events, exhibitions, 
New York Historical Society, the Athenaeum in Boston. We have a musical program. We have a food program. Uh, we're hoping to reenact the banquet which was held in Philadelphia by the captain of the Hermione for the whole of the Continental Congress of the time, uh, led by the first president, Samuel Huntington. But obviously we're also seeking to reach out to people. Um, so the Hermione will be open for people to visit at each port. Um, uh, we're very anxious that it becomes part of the communities which it's visiting while it is here. For instance, in New York, um, we're going to have a huge uh, waterborne activity, the People's Parade, where we'll lead a parade of tall ships, of small ships, boats, and any kind of waterborne vehicle uh, past the Statue of Liberty, paying homage to the Statue of Liberty, which was given by France to the United States on July the 4th, on Independence Day itself. We have some schools programs, we have an amazing digital game which re-evokes um, the American Revolution through the lens of the Hermione and allows kids to make the historical choices which they, uh, their forebears um, had to make. So uh, this, we believe, will be an exciting event uh, in the US uh, this year from um, June to mid-late July uh, up and down the coast. I'd just like to say a few words uh, also to our, all our friends in, in, in New York City. I mean, New York is going to be an absolute highlight of this, of this trip. It's terrifically important for us. We're going to be here on Independence Day and we're celebrating something that was a critical episode in the achieving of independence. We're going to be here um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a highly visual and impressive way. This is, this is going to be a fantastic sight. As, as the Hermione Holmes uh, interview, interview. We will have an impressive welcoming ceremony. But beyond that, we want to invite as many New Yorkers as possible to come and see us. This is a, this is a very, very rare thing. It's the culmination of 15 years' work of effort, of millions and millions of small subscribers in France giving money to make it happen. There's, there's a huge, huge upsurge of interest on the French side, and I believe that New York will display its customary, fantastic welcome uh, to the frigate and to the sailors who have, um, men and women, brought her across the Atlantic to, uh, to visit us. Fantastic. So we're celebrating something really important. <laughs> we're celebrating a piece of history which is in danger of being forgotten, which is that if it wasn't for French intervention, American independence is not likely to have happened. <coughs> or if it was to happen, it, did, it wouldn't have happened in quite the way in which it did happen.